Hi there, Mo Geverts here. Uh, did you know that people can echolocate uh, like cool mammals such as uh, bats and uh, toothed whales like dolphins, harbor porpoises? We can. Uh, if, you, if you're surprised by this, there's some links in the description you can go visit. Uh, Daniel Tisch uh, is one famous name here. He's hardly the first person and won't be the last person who's learned how to do this. He has a foundation. Anyway, humans uh, can make sounds with their mouths or make sounds and echolocate, figure out where they are. I'm interested in this because I, uh, well, I mean, a lot of reasons, but primarily because I'm interested in, I am studying whales and observation is great. Uh, <laughs> Math, data collection, uh, modeling, reading books, those are all fantastic ways of learning about things in the world. Uh, but uh, probably the best way, at least one of the most important ways I think that is to learn anything, is to do it yourself, to embody the mind of the beings you're trying to study. So, uh, putting two and two together, I realized I, I, I could learn how to do this, and I decided to learn how to do this. Uh, this video is going to be a description of... Listen to that music... Description of the process, uh, what it took, you know, it took me five weeks to learn, um, and I might even uh, tell you a bit about how to do it. Uh, in other videos, I will share a um, uh, analysis, a spectrographic analysis of the clicks that are actually quite interesting. They are ultrasonic, uh, as you'd expect, something like this to be. And I will also, in some future video, I'm, I'm sure I'll talk about um, what it's been like to learn how to echolocate. Now that I can make the clicks effectively, what is it like to try to use those clicks to navigate uh, in space-time? Okay, learning. So uh, once I figured out that it was a palatal click or an alveolar click, uh, I could not make it. I, I, I tried all kinds of tongue configurations. Uh, I, I cannot, I can now no longer remember how to do it wrong which is the odd thing. I cannot produce the sounds I was making before. I can only do it approximately right. It took about three weeks of near utter failure uh, where I tried different tongue positions and did things and sometimes got close. I understood I was closer. Sometimes I accidentally made the sound but couldn't recreate it. Uh, certainly I had a couple of episodes where my tongue was sore from the exercise. My tongue is much stronger now. Uh, but it wasn't until I was speaking to my brother and told him what I was trying to do that something odd happened, he understood what I was trying to do, and then, uh, in a roundabout way, thought about it, and then, cre and then made the click. <coughs> and then he taught me. Uh, he explained to me how he had done it, and then I started doing it uh, with, a, not as well as he did, uh, with a lot of leakage and failures in the, in the back of my tongue, so it sounded funny, like, <coughs> like that. But then, you know, after two, three, four, five days, I, I, I too had it about as well as he had it, and now I'm pretty good. Now I'm pretty good. Now, now I'm working on uh, developing one single click. It's important to, it, it turns out, I'm learning that it is important, if you're going to use echolocation, to be able to reliably produce the same articulation time and time again. Making the same click is uh, important because uh, you want to have a sound reference uh, sound. Your, your reference sound needs to be clear so that you can judge your distance from things. It's that simple. How do you make this click? How do you make palatal clicks? Well, first of all, these clicks, that what you call the palatal click or the alveolo palatal click, or well, there's several terms for it, are not just one click. You can actually click throughout your mouth. Check this out. Now, if you ask yourself, why are there only five clicks, five click inventories in, 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 in Kosian languages? Well, the answer probably has to do with... Um, the feasibility of making certain vowel sounds with certain click positions. You know, there's you you shape your mouth to fit the following context, and your mouth has a shape due to the pre or prior context. So maybe some combinations of click position plus certain vowels won't work. These languages have five vowels, a, a, e, o, u, a classic five vowel system. So maybe that's what's limiting it. Anyway, there's a lot of palatal clicks you can make. The By far the easiest one is the front one. And that's where you tighten your, your cheeks, you tighten your lips. You put your tongue pretty far forward, right here, on, on the alveola where your D goes roughly. And you bring the back of your tongue up tight as well. And there you go. Now, what does it mean to use two articulations? This is important. Turns out you're basically making the articulation for, which everybody can do, I think, 
and you're making the articulation for for the backs. Notice how I slipped into the click. How does that happen? Basically, if you tighten your tongue for and you tighten your tongue for at the same time, you make a pop. It's tight in the front, tight in the back. You get the pressure chamber. You need to create a vacuum and you ex it explodes. You create the pressure chamber with your cheeks, controlling your tongue, making sure it's sealed against the top of your mouth and your teeth. If your cheeks are weak, you get that. If your cheeks are strong, you get that. And then by moving the relative position of the tongue along the roof of your mouth from forward to back, you can do this. Oh, wait, wait. I can do better. Not bad. I've gotten seven before. In the back there, see how it's failing? It's hard. Okay. Uh, in summary, uh, you take, you put your tongue in two places, usually uh, for the loudest, palatiest click. Your tongue, front of your tongue is here where the palate begins, gets rough, right, right where the edge of the K, the thing is. And the back of your tongue is also pushed up against there. Again, think of this and do that. Uh, and then with practice, you'll push it up. Uh and learn to open your mouth and essentially you're pulling your tongue down like this. You're pulling your tongue down like this, as if you're opening your mouth. Anyway, that's the best pointers I can give you. Uh, let me know in the comments and if, if this has been interesting for you, uh, if you had success, did you learn how to click? Do you know how to echolocate? Have you heard about this? Do you use echolocation to get around? Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Um, that's it. Sure, echolocation is great. Uh, learning about whales is great. But the fact that I can now do, make these clicks is kind of a kind of cool. You know, when you're a linguist, you can finally do the 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 the, the mythical clicks. So I have been practicing with vowels, and it turned out that practicing with vowels was very useful for learning how to click. I forgot to mention that. So ah, we, we, no, ooh. that's with vowel afterward. Vowel before is a little bit harder for me. I haven't quite gotten it, but let's try. And then Interestingly enough, here's the oddest thing. When I make the clicks with vowel contexts, I imagine a T. I just imagine a T with the back of my tongue tied up against the top. It's the oddest thing. Is this like one of those things they talk about where when you learn a new phoneme, do you really create a new phoneme class or are you re-representing another phoneme class? I don't know what's going on, but it sounds like T to me. There you go. That's a little bonus. Take care.